Hi, I'm Christopher Sharpley. I'm Professor of Clinical Neuroscience in the School of Science and Technology at the University of New England. Particular interests are in anxiety and depression. And I'm really interested in why depression treatments don't work very well. For instance, about a third of people who undergo treatment for depression actually get better. The remaining two thirds don't. Even if we have additional treatments, there's still about half of those who don't improve. One of the reasons it's been suggested is that because there are a range of symptoms for depression and people vary according to those symptoms. We're looking at ways of grouping those symptoms into what is called depression subtypes. And we're particularly interested in four of these. First one we're interested in is called depressed mood. And uh, that's the thing that people are most familiar with in terms of depression, feeling sad, crying a lot. The second one is anhedonia, which is a little bit less known which is loss of interest and pleasure in doing just about everything, if you can imagine that. Then we're also interested in the way that people's thinking changes, their ability to make decisions. So we call that cognitive depression. And the fourth area we're looking at is the somatic or physical symptoms that a person has when they're depressed, such as they lose their appetite or they don't sleep very well or they find themselves to be fidgety or very, very lethargic. The real challenge for modern day psychiatry and neuroscience is to find ways of diagnosing people according to these sorts of subtypes so that more precise treatment models can be developed. In the United States, the Institute for Mental Health has suggested that this is the frontier that needs to be addressed if we're going to improve those treatment uh, statistics. As a consequence, we're undertaking a study here called Profile D, in which we're looking at a range of descriptors, demographic, psychological, relationship, biological, uh, the way the brain works. We're particularly interested in the EEG patterns of people uh, with depression and those without depression so we can make comparisons. What we're doing is putting all this together to see if we can make a matrix of the different forms of depression, the different subtypes of depression and the ways that we can describe these so that we can focus on the specific aspect of treatment that's going to be most salient to these people.